My goal, of course, was to see what was going on with Amadeus in this world. I had to find out. What do you want to talk about? About Amadeus. What? Maho's eyes suddenly went wide. The reaction surprised me as well. I simply said the word Amadeus. How do you know? What do you mean? How do you know about Amadeus? That program was put on hold last summer after Marcus's death. Amadeus was put on hold? You mean the project itself was shut down? Yeah, that's right. Clenched her fists in anger. Seemed to change in this world and was a big one. Now answer my question. How did you know about Amadeus? Because... Should I tell her about the world lines and a tractor field theory? So told me that someone at the lab was doing work on it. Rusu told you about that? I decided that it wasn't the time to tell her. If I tried to explain everything, I'd have to tell her about D-Mail and the time machine. Maho didn't seem to know about all that yet. But imagine what she'd do if she'd heard the truth. It was yet another of those people who were entranced by the possibilities of science. Tell me a little more about how the project was shut down. What was the reason? Evidently, there was a complaint from an outside group. Creating an artificial intelligence with human memories is no different than making a copy of a human, they say. It's something that only God is allowed to do. A lot of people in Europe and America like to push their own values on others, especially in delicate matters like these. Is that the only reason? Yep. At least as far as I've heard, the professor and the rest of the team were really mad when they heard the research was being shut down. Madea's program was stopped. some of these aha pharisee mo worth it all right all right <clears throat> always got to text the waifus the amadeus program was stopped that have something to do with the world line change too? Wait. So how did I even meet Maho? We'd originally met at the Amadeus seminar. That never happened. What's wrong? Oh, I, I was just remembering how we met. Oh yeah, that was quite the coincidence, wasn't it? I asked a few more questions, taking care not to arouse her suspicions, and managed to learn the basic story. Maho had really wanted to see the place where Kurusu had died. When she finally went to the radio building, she'd run into me. I hate to say this because it sounds so unscientific, but I'd like to think that it was Karma and that Kurusu brought the two of us together. Karma, or perhaps another example of a tractor field convergence. It had already been decided that Maho and I would meet here in Akihabara. Is there some meaning in that? Oh, right. Tell Mayuri and the others I said hi, and that last night was a lot of fun. Sure. Evidently, she'd gone to last night's party in this world line, too. It's giving me some good memories of Japan. Good memories? You're leaving? Not immediately. Remember what I said? I'm taking over Kurusu's research. I can't stand vacation in Japan forever. Let's see. Still, she was only in Japan for another 10 days. I hoped nothing would happen during that time. Amadeus had been shut down and no longer existed. What I hear Kurusu's voice. But I said goodbye to Maho. What that meant really started to sink in. I still feel Kurusu's warmth at my chest. Her smell. 
feelings I tried to forget were coming back. Now that I'd seen her. I'll never be happy in that world line. We'll be miserable. She had said. I knew that. I decided to stay here. It didn't mean I could erase the sense of loss I felt. Back to the lab to get all this together in my head. The cause of the attack in the last world line was Kagari. Good chance that Amadeus was involved in the world line change that took place afterward. This world line, the lab had never been attacked. Amadeus project had been cancelled while it was still in the research stage. Two major factors in the events that had occurred so far no longer existed. If they were gone, maybe there was no need to worry too much. So, still a tiny alarm going off in the back of my mind. A day has been shut down. Under Kagari's missing memories. If nothing else, I might need to learn the answer to those two questions. Thought for a while, and took out my phone and booted up the Ryan application. She and Akagari felt happier and more fulfilled than the people around her thought she was. Memories were missing. She only now had memories of when she was young. She'd gone to the past when she was ten and then gotten separated from Suzuha. Her memories afterwards were a total blank, with the exception of the last few weeks. Her oldest memories after her childhood were the ceiling she saw when she woke up. The ceiling of an old temple, with stains here and there that looked like faces being a little scared. And after that, she was given to Yanabayashi Shrine. Megan, would you like some tea? Oh yes, thanks, Luca. Okay, I'll put some on. That was when she'd met Luca. Uh, Urushibara. At that time, she hadn't realized that she already knew him. But Urushibara was a good friend of her adopted mother, Shina Mayuri. Played with her a lot when they were kids. When she was younger, she always thought he was a woman. After his young eyes, he'd been a strong grown up woman. At the time, she'd always wondered why Suzuha had called him Big Brother Luka. There you are. Thank you. The Luca in front of her now was far younger than the one she had known. He looked like a very pretty girl. Not nearly as strong. Though she'd only realized that he was the Luca <laughs> Urushibara she knew after meeting her mother. This tea tastes a little different. It's rosemary tea. It's supposed to help you concentrate and improve your memory. I had Ferris give me some. In her memory, finding lost memories seemed like a totally different thing to her. She didn't say so. So the thought made her very happy. Luca, Mama Mayuri, and the rest of Okabe's friends were all trying to help her get memories back. It would probably make her most uh, make most people nervous not having their memories. It'd be hard not knowing what she'd experienced. To be honest, Kagari didn't think she needed to remember. Sometimes it seemed like a memory was about to come back. Each time her mind would roar with a sense of fear and anxiety. Is it not very good? We saw that she'd only taken a sip and stopped. He seemed worried. Oh no, that's not true. It's good. I was just thinking. Thinking? Yep, but it's nothing. Took a sip of the tea, hoping to change the subject. Anyway, Luca, are you really a boy? One else said he was. But still, it just didn't seem right to her. I am, yeah. Hmm, you really look more like a girl, though. I don't know what to say to that. I know, hey, why don't we take a bath tomorrow? What? Then I'll know if you're really a boy or not. No, we can't. Oh, <laughs> but they really can't. 
Why not? Because I can't take a bath with a girl. Didn't you take baths with your sister? Yes, but that's when I was little. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it was a joke. You're so cute. I felt like I had to tease you. Aw. But if you responded that way, it means you really are a boy. What I've been saying. When he was upset, he still looked like a girl, she thought. You can see, there are dozens of different dishes available, and they're all you can eat. TV screen had been showing all kinds of delicious food. Wow! The sight of it almost moved her to tears. This time is so wonderful, it's so different than the world I know. Is it? What's the future like? Want to know? It looked a little uncertain. Though she'd asked, Kaguri wasn't certain she could tell him. Sure, she knew was filled with despair. Every once struggled desperately to stay alive, hoping that tomorrow would somehow be better. If there was no hope. How would they survive? I don't think I do. Kaguri sighed in relief. Better off that way. The future can be changed. The future can be changed? Yeah, that's what Mom said. She said it could be changed. That he'd change it. He'd change it? But Mayuri had always told Kagari. Tiny light of hope. Hmm, what was it? Stein's what? Stein's gate? Yes, that's it. Mommy said she knew it was real. But I really don't know what it is. <laughs> Steins Gate, to be honest. Kagari didn't know exactly what that meant. And each time Mayuri said it, Kagari had felt warmth in her heart. It would come to land them to Steins Gate. When she thought about that, it gave her hope. And now for our next report. Do you know that memory restoration technology is being studied around the globe? Today we have a special report on an American university that's at the cutting edge of this research. New Shown had faced had finished its uh, food report and had switched and had already switched to another topic. Now it was showing a college campus covered in greenery. It was a wide open space that clearly wasn't Japanese. The second she saw it, she suddenly felt dizzy. This Victor Kondra University it may seem like just another college campus, but there's a major project going on here right now. The decision became more technical. It was far beyond what Kagari, who had, who had only her memories as a child, could understand. But... Did I change the channel? Oh wait! Kagari stopped him before he could get to the remote. Kagari, do you understand this? Yeah, they're talking about how the brain works and whether you could make false memories. Wow, that's amazing! It was too complicated for me. She suddenly found herself easily understanding what was being said. Why? How? How could she understand this? Yeah, it's not that complicated. Memories are controlled by a part of the brain called the hippocampus. Uh, uh, and there's a special part of the hippocampus called the fascia de uh, dentata. Dentata? Dentata? I don't know what I'm saying. She was surprised at what she was saying, but the words kept coming anyway. When new nerve cells are constructed here, they cause existing neurological pathways to reorganize. That's what makes you forget things. And so when the study team did experiments on mice, they saw false memories created. Oh look, that room at the back, that's where they do the nice experiments and stuff. Uh, Kikari, are you familiar with this university? Huh? Suddenly realized that Luca was looking confused. I mean, you seem to know a lot about it. 
TV was showing something that looked like a lab. The TV went toward the back of the room. A white door was opened that led to the next room. Seeing the results of the experiments on mice performed here, the research team? No. I don't. Just now. That's right. She wasn't familiar with it. She didn't know anything about any place like this. But... I don't know. I don't know, but... For some reason, it suddenly feels like I do. There was suddenly a piercing pain in the back of her head. It felt like the beginning of something terrifying. She suddenly felt very nervous. Listen, I'm not doing it because you asked me to. Just don't forget that. Thank you. This morning I got to Denoji and asked him to protect Kagari if something happened. I meant I had to ask I had to talk to him about his role as a rounder again. I had to tell him that Kagari was caught up in something big too. But since this was the second time I had the conversation, I was able to make it go a little smoother. It was only relative to the first time though. I never wanted to ask him for anything like this ever again. So, Okabe, what the hell are you people involved in? Hey, I stopped myself. Can't say, huh? You'll ask me for a favor, but you won't say anything. Sorry. It's good, though. What? Information is your final trump card. If you had just come out and told me, I would have called this whole thing off. Anyway, just be careful. Thank you, sir. I get it, I get it. Don't be so polite. It makes it so damn hard to deal with you. I bow to him once more anyway. Of the Braun workshop. I managed to get to Noji's help. This morning I got another person on my side as well. Moika Kiryu. It's a lot easier than Tenoji. Checked with Daru last night and found that just like in the old world line, we'd hired her to find out more about Kagari. To do was ask her to keep looking into what Kagari had been doing before she'd come to town. I'd done everything I could in case something happened. All that was left was to pray that nothing did. Got back to the lab where Lukaku was waiting. With a very serious look on his face, he said he needed to talk to me. Something bothering me about Kagari's memories. Kagari's memories? Yeah, but I don't know if it'll bring them back. It's fine. If something's bothering you, just tell me. Okay. He started to fidget and rub his knees together. He looked at me and slowly opened his mouth. Last night they were doing a special on memory research on TV. It was about an American university. When Kakari saw it, she acted like she recognized the school. American college. Which one? Uh, it had a really complicated name. I think it was Victor Condor? A Victor Condria University? Oh, that's right! That's the place! Victor Condria University. That's where Kurusu had studied. I could have knew Victor Condria? There's truth in how? The most obvious possibility was that she went there, too. What a kitty when missing in Japan go to an American school. One of the best at that. Of course, it wasn't impossible, but... What do you think? Is this a clue? Can't say anything just based off of that, but... I see. Echo's shoulders slumped in disappointment. That doesn't mean it's not a clue. What? What then? Yeah, it's worth checking out. What did you want to talk to me about? The best way to find out was to talk to her directly. Kagari was just about to start work, and she seemed put off by the fact that I'd suddenly asked to speak to her. Wait just a second. I've asked another person to join us. Another person? I didn't know a lot about Victor Condria myself. I could ask Kagari what she knew about the school, but I couldn't tell if her information was accurate or not. It was a better person she could ask. Someone who should be here any minute. Excuse me? The best way to find out about the school was to ask someone who actually went there. 
In fact, Maho was to this day a part of the brain science lab. Oh, Maho, hello. Hi, how have you been? Maho still didn't know that Kagari was from the future. To keep her from finding out. You know, she really does look like Kurisu. Maho stared at Kagari. That whispered that I uh, whispered so that only I could hear. Made sense. I'd been surprised myself. Started by explaining to Maho why I'd brought her here. So, what do you think? She might have gone to my school? Wait a second. I don't know anything about this Victor Condra. Which a, is it place? Victor Condra University. See? I didn't even remember the name. Yesterday you acted like you recognized it, right? Lukako? Yeah, she said they did mice experiments in the back room. And then after that they actually showed the experiments in that room. Do you remember that, Kakari? Hmm, I don't. I wouldn't imagine Lukako would lie or that there would be any point in him doing so. The same was true for Kakari too. Urushibara, do you remember where that lab was? Uh, I don't know the details, but they said they were doing a research on memories in the brain. Which means it might have been the brain science lab. Brain science lab. Where... That's where I work. But where Kurusu worked too. Agri might have met you in Kurusu. Just a possibility. More than one place that researches brain science. And it's not just grad students where I work. There are a lot of regular scientists too. And I hadn't met everyone at the lab. But if I saw another Japanese person there, I'm sure I'd remember that. Which meant she didn't remember it. Which meant she probably hadn't met her. Lukako, is there anything else about Kagari that you've noticed? Kagari sometimes knows about things that are really complicated. Hey, I know some complicated things. I got pouted. It was an expression that was totally different than Kurusu's. For example? Um, roses and depression. Were just words that were complicated to write in Japanese. You special on fake memories last night, and you seemed like you knew a lot about it. Fake memories, huh? Yeah, one of the teams was working on that. I want to talk to them one time. Kagari, can you talk about that now? Hmm, uh, I don't really know. Did I really talk about that stuff? I did! Hmm, she put her hand between her eyebrows and thought. She didn't remember, it seemed. This has happened a lot before. That much until recently. It suddenly started happening over the last few days. Didn't know how Kagari could take things, or could know things about Victor Kondria. Lily had something to do with her missing memories. If I followed the trail a little longer, I might learn some clues. It was possible I might be able to bring back her memories. Suddenly she started to moan in pain. Kakari, what's wrong? Head, kind of. It hurts? Luka was looking at her face, worried. Yeah, just a bit. Lie down a little? I'm fine. It's all too sudden. Right, we may have put too much stress on her. I was looking worried too. You really okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, thank you, Senpai. I hope so. This was so natural. Oh, and I almost missed it. Hey, did she just... Yeah, she called me Senpai. Huh? Kagari, you just called Maho Senpai, right? Wait, I didn't. No, you definitely did. Urushiabara, you heard it too, right? Yes. 
senpai. Japanese word to address an older classmate or colleague. That Maho and Kagori had met at Victor Kondria. It was just a mistake? Hmm. Sound of footsteps coming up the stairs distracted me. It was so heavy, there was no need to wonder who it was. Hey! Hello? Oh, you're here, Mahotan? Don't call me that. Do I have enough? Uh, one, two, three. I ignored Maho's complaint and started to count the number of people in the room. There was some kind of paper bag in his hands. Okay, I've got enough. Enough what? You know how they opened a new uh, atoll in front of the station? They were selling some good looking pudding. I thought it might be a nice treat, so I brought enough for everybody. Found the bag, opened the box, and started putting the pudding cups on the table. Garu, do it later. You all look so upset. So upset. Is it that rare for me to buy some something for everyone? Yes, it is. I got some extra work at my job, you see. Not only am I talented, I'm also kind-hearted, and I get paid. Feel free to fall in love, ladies, huh? The bag over and started shaking it. It's in a spoon. I bet the staff that forgot to put one in. I think that's a clean spoon in the sink. Oh, I've got my own spoon I always use. He stood up to get a spoon from the sink, then suddenly stopped. He looked at Kagari with a confused expression. Kagari, do you own a spoon? had with you was that upa keychain right huh that's right isn't it that's strange why did i say I had one Your own spoon i've heard someone say that before people carry their own spoons around common in japan to carry around your own personal set of chopsticks lately but not spoons i knew I learned someone who carried around her own spoon it was Makase Kurusu. A moment ago she called Maho Senpai. Did Kagari know Kurusu after all? Hey, Maho. How many people called you Senpai in America? Just one. It's a Japanese word and a Japanese concept after all. No need to even ask who it was. The only one who called me Senpai was Kurusu. Kurusu. Kagari, do you know a girl named Makase Kurusu? Kurusu. Makase Kurusu. Did you know her? Was she in imitating her? Why would she need to do that? Makase Kurusu. Kurusu seemed to be... Kagari seemed to be desperately searching her memories. But it didn't seem to be working. There was sweat on her forehead. Her headache might still be bothering her. Force yourself. There's no need to remember immediately. No, it feels creepy leaving it like this. Feel like you remember something? No. Try saying something, Okuri. Uh oh, uh, what's going on here? The fact that Kagari responded this strongly to Kurusu's name meant there had to be some relationship. What could it possibly be? The question was, what had Kagari been doing ever since she separated from Suzuha in 1998? She never met Maho. Did she ever meet Kurusu? She became friends with Kurusu and learned a lot about her. And she'd gotten Kurusu's memories, uh, stories mixed up with her own memories. Or, I remember the machine that Kurusu had developed on the Alpha World Line and came up with a certain hypothesis. I quickly told myself that it was impossible. I met Maho. She nodded. Okay, Kagari. Let me ask you some questions. For now, I wanted to learn how much Kagari knew about Kurusu. Where's your father? Daddy? Daddy died when I was a kid. Memories. If her memories were mixed with Kurusu's, she wouldn't say that. Which were Kagari's memories? She says she remembered everything from before she was 10 years old. 
She only lost her memories after she separated from Suzuha in 1998. To go a little deeper. What does the word Kuri Gohan mean to you? Kuri Gohan? What are you talking about? Answer me, please. Kagri. Gohan. Kamehameha? <laughs> when else seemed confused. I felt as if my heart was about to stop. How could she know? Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha. Kurisu's at channel handle. But did she keep that a secret? She almost never let anyone know that she posted on that channel. Would have told anyone. Did Kagari know something that only Kurisu should know? That's what was pouring down Kagari's forehead. She offered her a handkerchief, worried. Kagari nodded and took it. Kagari, can you tell me how many major theories of time travel there are? Maho looked like she wanted to say something, but I motioned for her to stay quiet. Eleven. <laughs> spoke clearly, as if the answer was the most obvious thing in the world. Eleven in total. Wait, is that right? I hadn't expected much when I'd asked a question. I certainly hadn't expected that. The terrifying possibility I'd thought of earlier was becoming more and more real. It was impossible. It had to be. The more I tried to convince myself, the more my fears grew. Tell me what these 11 theories are. Neutron star theory, and then black hole theory, light speed theory, tachyon theory, wormhole theory, exotic matter theory. Kagari was counting with her fingers and speaking with very little hesitation. Cosmic string theory, quantum gravity theory, cesium laser theory, Elementary particle ring and laser theory, and lastly, uh, uh Dirac antiparticle theory. They're all correct. Maho's voice was hoarse. Tell me, Elkabe, how did I know all this? Everybody looked like she was about to cry a little. Can I ask you one more thing? You use those theories to build a time machine. I don't think so. Oh. Oh, but even if you could use those element theories, since may science may invent a new theory that works someday. Why do you think so? Why? That's because... I don't know. Let me ask another question. How did you arrive at that conclusion? I don't know. Just somehow I knew. Knew, huh? meant the knowledge existed inside of her. Why did she have that knowledge? Had she been to Victor Condry at some time in the past and met Kurisu there? They were close friends. Close to Kurisu would share her at channel nickname. She never told anyone. Perhaps she mistook what she'd heard from Kurisu for her own memories. It was the most obvious possibility. That would go against what Kurisu had said. Who said she didn't really have any close friends in America. To have developed a solid relationship with Maha would work, but the dark fear in my mind kept growing. Hey, Maho, remember how you said Amadeus was put on hold? Does the uploaded memory data for Kurisu still exist? Huh? Yeah, probably. I don't think it was erased. Many people could access that. Very few. We never really announced it anywhere. Self, Dr. Leskinen, a few of the other assistants, and then Curse. Another question. Would it be possible to transfer that memory data to a human brain? Huh? In another world line, Maho herself, or Dr. Leskinen, to be precise, had said something about that at the ATF seminar. I experienced it myself. Machine to digitize human memories, sent them through time, and then back to the same person's brain. It didn't exist in the world line, but once lived in a world line where it was developed in this very room. That far more times than I'd ever wanted to. Because of that experience, I came up with an idea. A terrifying idea. As a way to explain what was happening to Kagari now. What are you getting at? 
Fujisu was the one who had her own personal spoon. She was the only one who could call you senpai at school. But he go on in Kamehameha or Kurusu's handle and at channel. The only one who knew about it besides her. Fujisu would know about the lab at Victor Chondria. She would know about the mouse experiments. She would know about the 11 theories of time travel. Look at him, what do you mean? What are you trying to say? This is my idea. Look around the room at everyone, then back at Kagari. Kagari, it's possible that you may have Makasu Kurusu's memories inside you. Gasp. Water break. Kagari has Kurusu's memories? Suzuha didn't seem as surprised as I had expected. Mahu and I asked her some more questions after that. But Victor Chondria, about her research, her answers were all over the place. Some things she knew, some things she didn't. Some things she knew were things that only Mahu and Kurusu would have known. At the end, instead of being overturned, my hypothesis came out even stronger. All the questions seemed to tire Kagari out, and with Tenoji's permission, Mukako took her home. Baho completely refused to accept what I was saying. I did say before she left that she took into whether it was possible to transfer Amadeus' memory data into a human brain. That night, I explained the situation to Suzuha. So you mean Kagari has two personalities? No, that's not it. The proper word for multiple personalities is dissociative identity disorder. It's when additional personalities are created within the person themselves. Like you're upset or uneasy about who you are, so you make another personality within yourself. Once in a while, there'd be a case where someone would take the personality of the man or woman they admired, but usually it was a completely original one. That's not what's going on in Kakari's case. She doesn't have her personality, what she's got is, quite literally, only Kurosu's memories. Possible that Kurusu's memories are mixed in with her own. Kagari's memories weren't overwritten. She still had them. They had mixed together. Let's see. 2036 is technology, that's certainly possible. Since Kakari's a time traveler from that year, it's a possibility. She has her memories. From when she was 10, right? They put someone else's memories into her head. She should remember that, right? I think I remember her saying once in a while back that uh, back then that she heard the voice of God. Hallucination? It's possible that it's a product of Kurus's memories leaking out. Yeah. The future wasn't as peaceful as this era. There weren't enough people. There weren't enough supplies. Even if it. Even if they did have memory transfer technology, it'd be a very it'd been a military secret. Can't imagine them using it on a civilian, especially a kid. Kagari was a war or orphan. There's no chance it was used to cure her PTSD. It wouldn't explain why they'd want to transfer someone else's memories into her. Right. It means it's more likely that it was done during the time when she had no memories. Between 1998 and now. Even if it's possible in 2036, is it possible right now? Rusu could do it. Then it all by herself to make the time leap machine after all. Akase Kurusu transferred her own memories to Kagari? She'd do that. It's like something a mad scientist would do. No way. It was impossible, it had to be. There weren't many people as smart as Makase Kurusu didn't do it, I could imagine anyone else would. That's right, I'm getting ahead of myself. I agree. I might have been getting too attached to my own idea. There's no doubt that Kakari knows things only Kurusu would know. It'd be like Makusei, she's soul became a ghost and possessed her. I think of saying that around he Maho, she'll laugh in your face. Got that right. In the end, I realized there was nothing I could do for Kakari. Watch for a while to see how things went. The students, without any kind of specialized knowledge, 
matter how much we debated or what ideas we came up with, we wouldn't be able to find the answers easily. Come to think of it, Daru, what's Yugi up to? I'm glad she's busy with work every day. It looks like... What's she do again? There's a cake bakery I heard. She said it's really good. We should go check it out. That's right, but it's a little far away, isn't it? I should be happy if you went, right? Get a grip, Dad. Alright, my bad. Wait, Okarine, why are you asking anyway? No, oh, no reason. I was just curious. Cycle suit. I've been Yuki Amine? Still hadn't convinced myself it wasn't her. It was? She may be involved in some way that was happening to Kagari. That attack only took place in the other world line. It hadn't happened in this one, so I had no way to tell. It was something she... There's something going on with Mom? No, it's nothing. I still didn't have any proof. I'd have to just keep an eye on her. Her priority right now was Kagari. What had happened during the time when she'd lost her memories. If I could find that out, I might be able to understand what was about to happen to us. Okay. I'm going to get started. Ready? Yeah. Maho came to the lab again the next day. She was there to look at Kagari's memories. Kagari had volunteered to work with her. As of yesterday, my hypothesis was still just a hypothesis. And anytime she saw a hypothesis, she wanted to test it. Maybe that's just how scientists were. First, can you look at this? Maho held up a cell phone. It was a picture displayed on its screen. It was a corridor with white walls and clean white floors. Two people wearing white lab coats were walking down it. You know where this is? Um, a school? Which school? Victor Condre University. Do you know who this is in front? Tony Brown. His nickname is JB. Because he does this weird little dance when he gets excited. Then who's the girl? Hmm, I don't know. Well... Pretty famous among us scientists. Kurusu would definitely know her. Looks, looks like even if Kakuri does have Kurusu's memories, she can't recall them all perfectly. That would have seemed yesterday, too. There's some things she can remember and other things she can't. Doesn't mean we can say for sure that these are Kurusu's memories yet. Anyone could find out about these two with a little research. Kakuri, can I ask you some more questions? Okay. Last winter, Kurusu and I went to see a movie. Kurusu did? Is that surprising? Even we need a break sometimes. Normally all we do is work. Surprising, actually. I hadn't thought they interacted outside of work. I was hitting a little wall in my research, so she took me out. She said just... She said she just happened to have two tickets. Just like how a man asks a girl on a date. Or was any good with that stuff. Do you know what the title of the movie was? Mm, Bob Weiner's is in her foreboding. Maho gulped. Must have been the right answer. Is that a new movie? I've never heard of it. It's 20 years old. This was a revival showing. Kagari had guessed it. He'd known the title of a movie that Kurusu and Maho had gone to see together, in private. Since it wasn't a major worldwide release, it wasn't something you could get with a lucky guess. Somebody could have witnessed it. Sure, but how would they know you were going to ask that question? Are you saying she memorized every tiny bit of information she could possibly ask about? It would be impossible, and she didn't have a reason to bother anyway. Not like I don't know that. I could tell from the pained expression on her face that Maho was struggling with something. Starting to realize what it was. She didn't want to admit it. She didn't want to admit it was possible. It was winter. Kagari's forehead was dripping with sweat again. Going through her confused memories may have been putting a lot of stress on her. It's enough. This looks like it's hard on Kagari. Wait, just let me ask one more question. Yeah, okay, go ahead. 
Magari nodded and motioned for her to go ahead. What was your greatest treasure when you were a kid? As a kid. Even after you moved to America, you always kept it in your room. Hmm. A stuffed dolphin. Dad bought it for me when we went to the aquarium. Maho sighed and sunk into the sofa. Is she right? Yep. Kurusu's mom told me about it on the phone last night. The only people who knew about that were Kurusu and her parents. Then... I hate to admit it, but this hypothesis of yours, I can't rule it out. Let's see. Um, what's gonna happen to me? I didn't have an answer. I didn't even know how this had happened in the first place. The possibility I could think of was... Kagari. How did you make you go through all this? Get some rest. Maho set up with a serious expression on her face. Leaving? Yeah. There's still some things I can check on my own. Okay, see you later. Maho got up and went for the door without bothering to look back. She seemed to be silently shutting out the entire world. All we could do was watch her go. Maho stared at the computer monitor in a daze. The rest of the world was still feeling the afterglow of New Year's excitement. The last time she'd come to Japan, it was still in the heat of summer. She used her vacation days to come then. Her co-worker, Makase Kurusu, had suddenly died. She wanted to see the place where she was, uh, where she was murdered herself. Maho's feelings for Makase Kurusu were complicated. To Kurusu had come to her lab, Maho had thought herself a genius. She graduated high school after skipping grades and joined a university lab while still in her teens. It was understandable that she'd feel that way. Everyone else had said she was a genius too. Her pride was shattered into tiny little pieces by the arrival of Makase Kurusu. Makase Kurusu was the real thing. Oh, didn't even come close to her. She had realized that she could never be as smart as Kurusu. She realized that she didn't want to be beaten by her anyway. It would have been so much easier if she could have hated her. It would have been so much easier to hate Kurusu. I say Kurusu wouldn't even allow her that much. Dedicated scientist, and that dedication carried over to her treatment of Maho too. Maho, I think your research has the potential to change the world. If there's anything I can do to help, I will. Just say the word. Someday she swore she'd surpass her. Someday she swore she'd make Kurusu say that she was a smarter one. But now that would never happen. Makase Kurusu went away on a trip and never came back. Baho had been told that she'd been attacked by a robber and killed. It didn't seem real. It felt like she'd come back to the lab any day now and started arguing with the professors with the same self-satisfied smirk on her face. Till then, Maho would work on the Amadeus project, so that when Kurusu came back, she would be amazed. Amadeus. An artificial intelligence that could be loaded with an individual's memories. It was possible to digitize memories by analyzing the nerve signals relating to the memories stored in the temporal lobe. Kurusu, of course, had proved it. Then Maho and her team had turned that proof into an unusable technology. Time Kurusu got back, she would have it all ready for the next level. She shown it to Kurusu and astonished her. And that hope didn't last long. She was suddenly told that the project was cancelled. Of course, she couldn't accept it. What she said, no matter how many times she argued with the professor, she couldn't get the cancellation overturned. Madeus went to sleep at the bottom of the lab server, along with Makase Kurusu's digitized memories. Kurusu's memories. They were in the head of another girl. That happened. The one possibility, if it was possible at all. Like Ogabi Rentaro had said. Oh. She opened the door and a large man she knew very well came inside. 
Maho, what's wrong? I thought you were still on your New Year's holiday. What about you, Professor? What are you doing here on your day off? Maho's mentor, Dr. Leskinen, was here in Japan for a month long conference on artificial intelligence. Maho had come with them as his assistant, but the conference didn't take place every day, so they spent the time between sessions at the Japanese office making presentation materials and exchanging emails. In my case, I don't have much to do with my days off. It's not fun sitting in the hotel, so I may as well come here and work. Guess I'm the same. For a researcher, doing research was a hobby. If nothing else, all the scientists Maho knew were like that. Of course she'd come here today because she'd assumed Dr. Leskin would feel that way. You have a lot of things to do, don't you? Dating, for instance. Professor, if you keep that up, I'm gonna sue you for sexual harassment. Oh, anything but that. Alaskan had slumped his shoulders in a unique way that Caucasians always overreacted. He seemed intent on bringing Maho and Okabe together. She and Okabe were both friends of Kurusu's, so they talked. And so they talked a lot. But there was nothing more to it than that. At least that's what she thought, probably. All right, in lieu of an apology, can I ask you something? Anything. It will keep me out of court. All right, what's going on with Amadeus right now? You should know the answer to that. Right now, there's no plans to continue the project. I know that. What I'm asking is, what happened to the Amadeus data? about that. It's saved on the lab server, right? Nobody else accessed it or took it out. Leskinen's eyes narrowed. He slowly shook his head. Maho, I don't know where you got that idea, but Amadeus access, uh, access is limited to only a few people, and as far as I know, no one else has touched it. Nothing else? I haven't received any reports about it. The same goes for my and Kurus's memory data. Of course. Then, is it possible there's some other AI project going on that I don't know about? Of course not. You're the most important member of our research team. Lost Kurusu. It was a big loss, but I think you're the only one who can take her place. There's no way I'd start a new project without you knowing, right? Let's see. Compliment felt like a bit too much for her to take at face value. There were a lot of scientists who were always looking to get a leg up on the competition. If someone else got the glory first, everything you worked on until that point would be useless. Even in the same team, there were only a few people you could really trust. The Maho, Dr. Leskinen was one of those people. Will that do for an answer? Yes. Then may I ask you something? Where did this come from, all of a sudden? Well... Worried that someone might have access to your secrets? Yeah, something like that. Then you don't need to worry. Amadeus was developed so as not to share any secrets the original wouldn't want shared. Then goes for the save data. Even if someone did steal it, the parts the original person wants to keep secret the most are kept within a black box. They can't be accessed via Amadeus or from the memory data itself. If those secrets get out, it's because a living human wanted them to. Living human. That's right, the original person themselves, in other words. Well, feel better? Yeah, I guess so. Not that she didn't trust Dr. Leskinen. She could relax until she'd seen for herself that no one had taken the data. I only thought it was possible to believe something after you'd seen it yourself. She thought a scientist should be. Right now, she didn't have the access rights to do so. In the end, she was stuck with her doubts. She knew she was. She knew this was going to happen. She could stop herself from asking anyway. Oh, I didn't expect to see you two here. Doctor Reyes walked through the door, just as she finished her conversation with the professor. Sorry, right, water break. Gotta take him.
Okay. Christ, don't you two know it's a holiday? What about you, Dr. Reyes? I've got nothing to do in my hotel. Maho well, exchanged a glance with Dr. Leskin and then shrugged. It's just how scientists were. What? What's going on? <laughs> eh, it's nothing. She and Dr. Leskin and laughed at Reyes' confusion. The doubts in her mind lingered. Urusa's memories were inside of Kagari's head. Several days had passed since I'd begun to suspect my hypothesis was correct. I'm sorry, Okarin, I've caused a lot of trouble for you. No, it's nothing really, and I think Lukaku and Mayuri are doing a lot more for you than me. In fact, Mayuri and Lukaku were doing a very good job of taking care of her. Mayuri may not have realized it, but Kagari looked up to her as a mother figure. And living under the same roof for so long, Lukaku had come to care for her a lot. That's not true. All I'm doing is giving someone is giving her someone to talk to. Ayushi's sorry that she can't do more, you know. No, that's not true. Luke is being really nice, and just having mommy around makes me happy. Ayuri fidgeted in embarrassment when she heard the word mommy. I understand why. It must feel strange to be called mommy at her age, especially by someone who was older than she was. Hey, mommy? What is it? Can I give you a hug? Hug? Can I give you a hug like he always used to do for me when I was little? <laughs> well, uh, I'm blushing. Can't? No, go ahead. Ayuri smiled and nodded. Kagari gave her a big hug with a huge grin on her face. Kagari, you're such a good girl. <laughs> Ayuri never asked for details, but she seemed to sense what was happening to Kagari. Probably understood that this was the best thing she could do right now. Mommy was strange. Kagari was a lot older. When they were like this, they really did look like mother and child. Thank you, Mommy. Kagari slowly moved away from Mayuri. She looked a lot calmer than she had a moment ago. It was probably okay to tell her now. So, Kagari, how are you doing? I doing? Hmm, I guess I don't know. Don't know? Sometimes I find myself remembering things. But I don't know if the curse whose memories are my own. Data formulas, experiments. It's like I don't understand them, but I know them. Kagari's only memories were of her time as a child and the time since Lukaku's father's friend had found her. Kagari's memories would appear sometimes and fill the gap in between. I wouldn't even imagine how that must have felt. Uh, just a while ago, I remember Daddy. It was when Daddy told me I did good when I was little. I remembered that, and it made me really happy. My parents died when I was a baby, and then Mommy Mayuri raised me. I don't know who my dad is. Even though it wasn't my own experience, I really felt happy when he praised me. That just made my head feel all funny. Yuri grimaced and held her head in her hands. First time I met her, I'd been surprised at how much she looked like Kurusu. Looking to her like this, I realized how different she was. The way her expression was constantly changing, the way she always slightly overreacted was actually more like Mayuri. Because they were mother and child? So, do Kurusu's memories come out often? Yeah, a lot more than they used to, maybe. Let's see. Hey, Okering, what's gonna happen to Kagari? Normally, the best thing we could do is get her looked at by a team of specialists. Given her position, it wasn't that easy. I don't really want an exam. Uh, that was all I did when I was little. Yeah. Yep, I said it was to treat my PTSD. But she didn't seem eager to get looked at either. Hmm. 
more of course his memories woke up 